So what are we covering today, Sean? Cool, what's up, Michael? So we are going to be covering outwear today, outerwear. Um, we'll be talking about three different styles, the shocket, the varsity bomber, and the rope coat, which is kind okay. of a, an outlier, but I yeah. thought it would be something that's cool to talk about since yeah. it's trending. Why don't you read the overview for us? Cool, so overview. In a more frugal market, every piece in a range needs to be as understandable and approachable as possible, especially the case for investment pieces such as coats. The decision-making journey to purchase needs to be easy, offering items that feel familiar and have a clear purpose. Okay, so when we discuss outerwear, um, before we continue with all of this stuff, mm -hmm. I want to kind of talk about how, like, where outerwear falls within our company mm -hmm. and within our business structure. I personally really like outerwear. Um, I think, especially on the West Coast, um, I think there is actually like like outerwear staples that we could really get into and possibly do a whole lot of business in. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why uh, we're not doing it right now, honestly, is it because currently we don't have the buyers for it. Um, uh, as you know, but uh, as our viewers should know, is like a vast majority of our business is done with the Ross, TJ Maxx, Burlington, basically the value channels of the world. Mm -hmm. And we basically run like an ATS business where um, we develop a full range of product, uh, we do production for a full range of product and sell it to them on an as needed basis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was discussing with uh, Dave um, yeah. about outerwear a couple times at like at some point last year because um, I really wanted to get in it. We're in basically every other category. Mm -hmm. And um, basically it was like, dude, like the price points in which like outerwear is being sold right now at the value, in the value channels, it's ridiculous. And- um, Ridiculously low? Yeah, no, it's, it's unmatchable. It's un unattainable. It's, it's unmatchable. Uh -huh. Like it's, I can't even dream of matching it right now. Like it's- um, What is that price point? Kind of well, I think right now it's like what they're looking for is like somewhere between nineteen ninety nine and twenty four ninety nine. Okay. Um, like I don't like um, and all that aside, right now is at this point it's like we're not even going to be breaking even if we get into the outdoor game. For we we know a lot of outdoor suppliers because we used to do a lot of suits here. Yeah. I, I did a lot of suits here actually. Um, but yeah, like uh, it turns out, like you know, after we did some digging and everything like that, the way that they supply their outerwear to um, all the buyer, um, all the all their customers is basically, um, they usually buy all the leftover goods that all these branded outerwear companies are dumping at cost at the end of the year, mm -hmm. basically to clean up space for the uh, uh, incoming mm, spring product new, new and everything. Season stuff. Yeah, and they just pack it, pack it and hold it at their distribution centers, and then they release it at the start of next season. And so that's kind of why, like, when you go into like the Rosses and TG Maxx's and Burlingtons, you see a lot of outerwear out there, and most of it is going to be branded, mm -hmm. and most of it is going to be the last season stuff. Got it. You know what I mean? And so at this point right now, like the way the value channel is being supplied with a bunch of their outerwear at this point is just, um, you know, like just selling like leftover goods. Yeah. Like the stuff that basically, like basically clearance stuff, you know, yeah. and that's kind of the whole game there. I love to break into the outerwear market, but you know, like sometimes, you know, even when you ask around with the buyers too, they're kind of like, eh, no, nah, you know, we're pretty good on outerwear. I mean, yeah. it like maybe it's because of what you just said right there. Like uh, outerwear tends to be investment pieces. You know, sure. like- I mean. When you do buy outerwear, you yeah. it's not just for that one season. I mean, it's the longevity of that. Yeah, you, gonna want it. you want it for at least three, five years. Yeah, Even yeah. longer, you, some you of them, wear some, it. some of them. Right, and I was thinking like too, like the staples of outerwear nowadays like leather jacket, yeah. denim jacket, um, you know, like. I put like puffer jacket, kind of like. Yeah, but puffers you could replace every year. Sure, that's yeah, true. Puffers you could, you know, I mean, maybe I'll do puffer jackets. I just don't like puffer jackets. I, I like, I don't like the whole down feathers coming out and all that bullshit, but anyways. about doing a, What's that called? Adir not Adirondack. Is that how you say it? Anorak? Anorak. <laughs> Adirondack. <laughs> what is that? Isn't that? <laughs> yeah, but Anoraks, okay, I don't consider, <laughs> I don't consider Adirondacks, I don't consider Anoraks outerwear. Okay, because Anoraks are basically like windbreakers or like, these. Uh, Anoraks are basically just like that one giant pocket in the front. Like a kanga pouch. So, I mean, th these are actually called kangaroo pockets, but like, but it's like a real like kangaroo pouch with like, you know, whether it's like a zipper or Velcro, yeah. like that flaps, you know? I mean, anoraks aren't, like, I don't consider that outerwear. Like, what I consider outerwear is like a straight up, like, heavy layering piece, something that's heavy and beefy, yeah. like these over here. But, like, uh, I mean, we'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. But, um, anyways, yeah. So, I mean, why don't you continue with the presentation? It's a long tangent. Cool. So, the first body we'll be looking at is the shacket. So, obviously, you can tell it's a shirt and a jacket put together. 
So, key to the trend for layered looks, which isn't going anywhere for the foreseeable future, the shacket will also remain important. Useful as a mid-layer in cooler weather, it makes perfect sense as a light top layer as well. The, this versatility, plus the great variations in cool styles now possible, sees its place as a key item source. So we used to do shackets. Uh, we actually did shackets, I wanna say three years ago, uh, when we were doing a lot of uh, China production. Okay. Uh, we stopped doing it, um, honestly, because it's too expensive for us too, because like shackets are typically lined with yeah. like quilting or some kind of- um, Like a Sherpa. Yeah, Sherpa. Yeah. You know, it's, it's typically lined and mm, that's just, it's fucking expensive. It's costly. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, like, I mean, we, we've done this before. Um, it, was this something that they say is trending or it's just been I mean, around? It, it, it's or? been around, but I think <clears throat> They're making a push they're making for it. They're making it more of a staple I mean, I item guess, to have just yeah, yeah. because it is. I guess it makes sense for like, um, seeing that how this whole outdoorsy workwear, workman-like thing is yeah. kind of going up, uh, like turning sure. up. So, you know, I mean, it could be some, could have something to do with that. I mean, it's very trend appropriate, I guess, mm -hmm. for stuff like that. Can you show us some examples of shackets yeah. you found? So uh, River Island, mm -hmm. UK brand. Got some pretty cool shackets, very wide range of yeah. styles, different, you know, pocketing, you know, different can, buttons. Can you go back up to that? Mm -hmm. This guy here? This, this blue check? Yeah. yeah. Let's click, click, click that. Up. Yeah. Okay, so like for something like this is like, I mean, we do stuff like this. Yeah. You know, we do stuff like this, but I mean like for us, like this is just classified as a shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, I mean, our flannel is probably a lot thinner than that one because you know, I mean, we're retailing it right now for like fourteen, sixteen ninety nine. Yeah. You know? The cool, unique thing about this one is the full zip. Now, um, what do you think of that full zip on that flannel? Is it a full zip? No, fuck, no, it's, it's not even it's a full button. zip. Oh, go back, go Here. back. Let's look for a full zip. Okay, we're doing that one exactly. Whatever, don't buy that. Buy MBX. I mean, Westie. Yeah, you see, all of these, I don't call these shackets. No, no, that one maybe, but like, you know, if you scroll up, you know how you just, like, this is basically the shacket search, right? Yeah. Black linen, you see like this, how is that a shacket? Like, is that using like a shirting fabric? Is that the reason why it's called a shacket? Probably because it's a lot, maybe it's thicker than a shirt. Then I gotta ask you then, are trucker jackets shackets as well? I technically would call it a shacket. Google, Google, Google trucker jacket. Trucker jacket, yeah. Or Duck Duck Go trucker jacket. Yeah. Just go to image search, yeah, whatever. That. That is that a trucker jacket? Oh, well, that's sweet. That's leather. No, no, fuck that. Go to the go to the red tab trucker on the way in. That. This that. one? No, no, that. That that. Okay, there you go. There. That's a really heavy twill shirt. Is that considered a shacket? Um. Same design. Yeah, but is that a shacket? I'd call it a shacket. No? All right, fine, I guess it's a fucking shacket. No, I mean, like, for me, that, that's, that's, a, that's a trucker jacket, you know? So if you go back to the River Island. Kind of a loose term. You know. Yeah, but like, you see, how is that any different from like that, for example? There is none. You, you, you get what I mean, right? Yeah. Like, and, like for me, like a shacket is always like some kind of like yarn dye or like some kind of flannel. Yeah. Something that looks like a shirt. But it isn't, yeah. you know? Like, that doesn't look like a shirt at all to me, you know? Mm -hmm. like, here's, here's a zip-up one. Yeah, so is, is shacket, like, is this new trending shacket craze basically just a jacket? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, just putting a new twist on it, yeah, I feel like. Yeah, like, that, like that's revamp, what I'm wondering. Yeah. The I don't know, name. because we used to do a lot of shackets. That's a shacket. Yeah. You see, like, it's like a flannel shirt, you mm -hmm. know? It looks like yeah, I mean, a... We, we, and we do that in Westie, and we do that in... Right, right. Yeah. But then, like, for me, like, a shacket has to be lined, too, with, like, the Sherpa or, like, the quilting or mm -hmm. something, a little, something a little bit beefier. Yeah. Like, you know. All right, anyways. Um, okay, so cool. Shackets are coming back. Yeah. Also found Ted Baker. Another, yeah. Another, U, like another UK brand. Yeah. Denim shirt. Um, got, okay. in, got in corduroy. Yeah, you see, like, uh, yeah, okay, maybe I'll call that a shacket. You know, okay, that's a shacket. You see? This it one? looks like a, no, 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 the corduroy shirt. Yeah, you see that one? <laughs> but then if you see the body there, right? If you see it, like, you could wear, wear it zip up, like, zipped up like that. Yeah, yeah, like a buttoned full, up like, like that. Like a full shirt. Yeah. yeah, like a full on shirt. Like, that That reads shacket to me, you know? Yeah. And the way even he's wearing it right now, you see how you could roll it up? Yeah. You know, like, 
I, I, I would consider that like a shacket, you yeah. know, like an overshirt. Mm-hmm. That, that kind of looks like it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe River Island's just throwing the word shacket on everything because it's a trending word, you know? It's yeah, like, it looks like a shirt that has collar and you can wear it. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, I mean, because it is apparently like a trending body, you know? Yeah. Maybe, yeah, fuck, you know, maybe we'll call all these shackets too, you know? Semantics. <laughs> yeah, I know, seriously, man. Like, it's like, okay. Anyways, <laughs> so shackets are doing really well. <laughs> Let's move on. Cool. Yeah. So, second one is the Varsity Bomber. Mm-hmm. So, this style bucks from. Bucks the trend for coverall styles, convenient for driving, commuting, and clement weather. This blousen based style is defined by the addition of Letterman style appliques. 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 I always freaking mess that word up. That's why I got you. A great update for bomber styles uh, with even fewer newer updates from less expected colorways. So I guess when they talk about colorways, I think they're kind of talking about, like you said, yeah. like the earthy, yeah. not nature looking, obviously, like this one. You were a jock growing up. Yeah, I play baseball, but... You, you never owned a Letterman jacket? No. You know, when I was in high school... Have you have you owned a Letterman jacket? Yeah. We talked about this last yeah, week, too, right? Yeah, we did. I, I'm having a dish of... Dude, I used to but fuck... But was it a flex? Yeah. I used to fuck so hard with Letterman jackets in high school. I used to want one, man. Did you walk around like, pop it? Like, what's up, ladies? No, I, I, you said I used to want one. I was in marching band. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was in marching band. Like, I remember talking about this. Like, oh, yeah, coming back oh, yeah, to Nick Cannon. No, uh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. It's like, too much, actually. Like, yeah, like, you know he has, like, eight baby mamas? Sorry, I got on a tangent. But he has, like, five baby mamas in the Yo, in they the can it. I think Sean has a problem with you, bro. Putting you on blast on our, our very <laughs> humble podcast. Data's <laughs> just yeah. but taking no, a hole for himself. Yeah, but I used to fuck so hard with Letterman Jackets. I thought they were the coolest thing. Um... Like, yeah, they were cool, but I mean, back in high school, I'm like, do I have an extra $300 to Yeah, but I mean, spend? like, you know, for me, like, at the same time, too, is like, once I graduated from high school, it's kind of became, like, too douchey because it became, like, this whole, like, like, it felt very collegiate, yeah. almost. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, like, very, like, Abercrombie and Fitch- yeah. Fitch-ish, yeah, you know? Sure. It's, like, you don't wear A&F nowadays. It, no. You look kind of lame, you know? It kind yeah. of, like, became this whole thing where yeah. it's, like, oh, like, you know, someone's living in the past. Yeah, someone's kind of, like, early, you know? pre, pre-teens, teens right, stuff. Right, right. It kind of had this whole ironic flair to it. You know, like, let's say, like, right now, if you were going to go anywhere, like, in the, like, let's say in L.A., in the dead of winter, where the fuck would you go wearing a Letterman jacket? Nowhere. You're, you'll go to your college reunion wearing yeah. your leather jacket. Yeah, I'm, like, not going out to, I'm not going to a bar or a show. I don't, yeah, I mean, so like, that's the thing. Like, I mean, wh- if it unless comes back, super, unless you're a super hardo and be like, "Yo, it's my high school. It's my patches. What I did." It yeah, was, but like, yeah, but my stats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you do that year? Yeah. World yeah. record or not world records? <laughs> school records, baby. School records. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like you're saying, it's coming back. Let, let's see. I, I think it, ha- mm-hmm. it kind of has a nostalgic play to it. So like yeah. wearing it in you know in your late twenties, early thirties, yeah. in it something that kind of reminds you of the good old days. Yeah. But having really cool patches yeah. and artwork on it. Yeah. And but yo, you know what? Let me also Wait, add. Sean, you saw recording the screen share, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let me act. It's been recording. Okay, cool. Let me actually say one more thing about this, actually, because mm-hmm. um, there is one that one thing that I would mention is that Letterman jackets look horrible with slim jeans. Yeah, you kind of have to you kind of have to wear baggy. Right, baggy and baggy's stuff. coming back. Yeah, maybe that's why the Letterman's coming well, back. That's a good call. You get what that's I'm a, saying? That's a great like, yeah, because I I just realized that right now too. It's like all of them are wearing like really baggy jeans mm-hmm. in both of the photos that you're showing. You know? Yeah. All right. Anyways, let's see what ASOS and Farfetch. Yeah, I have to say about this. All right, those are really slim bombers. Yeah, these are slim bombers. There's I mean, okay, that's a straight letter. There you go. That that's uh, yeah, with like the with the ribbed collar and the ribbed hem. Yeah, 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 with the ribbed hem for the for that contrast, those mm-hmm. snap buttons. Yeah. You know, some kind of suede or some kind of leather as the yeah. fabric, a little bit on the heavier side. Yeah, but I think that they're yeah. kind of making it fashion by having it kind of displaced throughout the body and not being a. You know, sure. Straight, straight, and symmetrical on there. Sure, so I think yeah. it kind of adds a, yeah, kind, of a yeah. kind of a pop culture yeah. feel to you it. You know what? Can you like scroll down a little bit more? Let's see if there's any similar similar styles. If you, oh. you, you oh, know right. what I'm saying? Do they have that? Yeah, yeah they do. By the look, recently viewed. No. Oh, all right, cool. You might also like no. Yeah, no, that's let's that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, because you see, if you go up, if you go up, like these bombers, not not that one. That one's like 
Yeah, you see those, these bombers? Those are normal bombers. Yeah, dude, these have been around for a minute, man. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, these were cool back in, like, 2016, 17 as well. You know, that's kind of when the, this body, mm -hmm. or this silhouette, whatever you want to call it, uh, started getting really big. Yeah. Anyways, let's scroll down. Let's see if there's any more, like... Oh, okay, there you go. Another one there, too. Yeah. Yo, that's a pretty douchey look, though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, with the freaking white beater underneath. Bro, only Europeans are gonna pull that shit off. Look at, uh, dude, dude it, it's, it's so... Very, it's very French. This, dude, this is so bad. They have LA and they have Brooklyn on the same thing. Get out of here. What is that? On the same side? Menace. That's what you are. You're a menace when you wear this. God. Look at, uh. Yeah, this is so Euro, dude. It's very Euro. And, so and Euro. And with... And with the, Double fabrication with like whatever this is. I like the like color though. Leather. I do like yeah. It's like a yeah, nice teal. Those are, those are some sh that's some shiny ass leather on his sleeves though. Nah, there's no way that's real leather. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's go back. Let's stop talking shit about him. All right. All right. Cool. And then I found some from Farfetch, which obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah. Designer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. These are actually pretty sick. These are dope. Yeah. These are pretty dope. Yeah. 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 That Gucci one. Yeah. I mean, those are like regular bombers, but like if you go up. Go for the, like the astronaut logo. Oh mm -hmm. man, yeah, those are. Oh, the Alien Boys Club. Yeah, of course it is. That's clean. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty clean. I'd I'd fuck with that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I could. I don't think I could pull that it off. black ones. I mean, they're both dope. I I would pull it off if I had an extra five hundred and forty dollars. Yeah. Oh, plus shipping. <laughs> plus shipping. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I hear that joke, I just think of. Have you ever seen? Uh, uh, dinner for schmucks. Oh, no, I haven't. I, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I know. I'll, I'll show you. The, I'll show you yeah. the video after. Later, yeah. But yeah, these are definitely some pretty intense. No, like the uh, Palm, Palm Angeles. Palm Angels. Palm Angels. Okay, I mean, I mean, they're pretty sick. Oh, dude, off white. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. Yeah. Okay, cool. You know what I'm gonna sick. do? Like, so, like, that's kind of what we're... Let's bring that in right now, too. Because, like, I was going to actually mention that here, what I think is, like, the coolest part about the whole bar... Like, all the varsity jackets, so the ones that we're looking at, we're going, like, that's really, really cool, is the yarn dye contrast on the ribs. Yeah. You know, like, for all of these, if you see it, like, you see that one? This one? It has the yarn dye contrast, mm -hmm. Billionaire Boys Club. That's, yeah. that's one that we really liked. And if you... Let's, let's keep looking. Oh. Like, all the ones that we think are cool, like, even, like, the St. Laurent one... Mm -hmm. You see, go, go up, go up one. Yeah, that one mm -hmm. with like the contrast. I think, um, I think that's going to be a huge defining thing as well. Or I think that's and, and the contrast of the pockets too. Right, yeah. exactly. You know, like how how they have all that extreme contrast. Yeah. On everything, I think it, I think that's actually a pretty dope. That's a pretty cool design idea that we could kind of take. And yeah. that's actually very, that's very varsity jacket. Yeah. I don't think there's any other kind of outerwear that's doing this in a big way. It kind of, it does scream varsity. Yeah, I could see that. That's something that could actually transition These over to the mainstream. These also look kind of like almost slim fitting too, though. Too. Yeah, so right. Not, like the yeah. the one I had example of that. Right. That looked puffier. Yeah. These look actually skinny. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like, I mean, like when I'm looking at all of these right now too, I, that is something I think ugh, we missed that th last week, but we're actually catching it this yeah. week. Is like you know the the whole contrast rip thing. Like, I'm, I'm fucking with this really hard right yeah. now, too, you know? And it's like, even, like, you see some of this in our knits as well, you know? Like, yeah, our yeah. tipping groups getting yeah. really, really big. Yeah. I could see, like... In both Westy and in MBX. Yeah, I could, yeah. I could see this making a huge, like, causing huge waves in, like, the, um, in, like, the mainstream market, though, yeah. in, like, the future. I mean, look, we can't afford to do varsities, but, like, you know, we have our own substitute for it. Like, this isn't really a var... I mean, I guess, I guess you guys will call it varsity, I mean... Or you know, I, you know who River Island will call this a varsity. <laughs> but like, <laughs> they put anything in any. Category. Sorry, River Island, but seriously, like, yeah, this is just fleece. This is fleece. This is French terry. It's um, this is basically like hoodie fabric. You know, we, we just made this out of like a hoodie fabric because um, we were sick and tired of selling hoodies, so we decided to burn some money on a loss leader. So yeah, um, but anyways, um, yeah, like I do think though, like the yarn dye, the yarn dye ribs. Yeah. Um, I think that's something. I think that's a huge point to make. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's I think kind of makes the. I think that's what separates it from just a normal bomber. Right. Make it a varsity. Bomber. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That'll give it the varsity look. Yeah. You know. And that'll be the varsity bomber. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. You see, all contrast rib. You see that? Yep. Even in your examples, all contrast ribs. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty dope. You know what? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do that. I think. I think I'm. I think I'm gonna force. 
I think I want to force a couple of these styles and to be essentials for next year. All oh, right. Yeah. Anyways, cool. Let's move on. Cool. And then the outlier, just kind of wacko one that I thought was pretty cool to talk about is the rope coat. Uh -huh. So obviously coming out of COVID, yeah. com comfort was key. Robes uh -huh. are comfort. Uh -huh. um, so now they're saying the rope coat is the brand new from the catwalks. The rope coat felt fresh as well as embodying the pinnacle of the search for supreme comfort. Typified by a shawl color and usually softly belted, the shape signifies the close proximity between loungewear and the rest of men's wardrobes at the moment. Looks that transfer easily from inside the home to outside or a growth area. I don't see this <laughs> at all on the West Coast. This is, you, this, this is Louis Vuitton, which is you, pretty dope, but. You know what bothers me the most about that paragraph? Is like, looks that transfer easily from the inside of the home to outside or a growth area. Yeah. I think that's a stretch for this look. For sure. For a couple reasons. One, nobody wears a fucking robe indoors. You're kidding. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Get out of here. Yeah. When you're home, you wear a fucking robe. Oh yeah. Robe and my freaking Uggs, dude. My Ugg boots and just my robe and some shorts. It's classic. Drink my morning cup of coffee on the roof. You're fucking kidding me. You really do that? Yeah. You have a robe. Yeah. It's an Ugg robe too. It's phenomenal. It's soft as oh a baby's butt. Oh it's my great. God. <laughs> okay. All right. That's why I kind of fucks with this. All right then. All right then. <laughs> okay. There you go. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Holy shit. Robe culture does exist. Robe culture is alive Heck and well. Yeah, dude. Steve Hefner, man. I love robe. Dude. It's, it's, okay. So when was Hugh Hefner even relevant? Honestly. What? When was Hugh Hefner relevant? He's still with us. He's still with us, right? Yeah, he passed away. He really? No. Oh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yep. <laughs> I was gonna say like, uh, pour one out in my mouth. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, but like, like. What do you mean? Like he was relevant. No, no, no. He was. Yeah, like back in like the two thousands. Yeah. You know, like two thousands to like two thousand ten. Even when like the last couple like decades that he was alive, like you know, like Playboy was cool back in like two thousand to two thousand ten. You know. Yeah. Like Playboy was the Playboy was cool. Like, don't come after us, Playboy. We love you, Playboy. You guys, eighties, nineties, eighties, nineties. Even well, even like the two thousands. Like, cause I, like, I feel like once the internet started to really gain its popularity. And yeah, then... yeah, but bro, like even like no, even like post too. Like, cause like when you think of like Entourage. True. Like 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 during Entourage, the Playboy Mansion was awesome. Hugh Hefner was still like yeah. fucking legendary, even yeah. back in like the Entourage days. But like it's like for like most of like the two thousand tens, it's like. You know, it's, God, I, I had no idea robe culture was still alive and well. Yeah. Do all your I, homies do the same thing? Nah, not all of them, but I rock it. I love it, dude. I, it's Cla a very, Claudia very got, niche Claudia, Claudia got that robe for me for Christmas. Really? My favorite Christmas You're gift. I, I swear, dude. I, I did not know that. Okay, shit. Okay, so I guess, I guess I'm totally off There's base. There's nothing better than sitting in your robe outside drinking coffee. You know what's better? Basketball t-shirt. Basketball shorts <laughs> and a fucking hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Two H's in. That's what's up. So. Yeah, okay. Holy shit, you're a robe guy. Yeah. I had no idea. That's great. <laughs> my God, okay. Okay, so. Would I, wear it, would I wear it outside of my home? Probably not. Why not? Because it's weird. But what if it was cool? <laughs> what if it was acceptable to do it? Would you do it? Eh, maybe. Maybe yeah, because again, like, that's kind of very, what like the very whole, low yeah, probability, like, but no, because like you know, like sweats are becoming cool. Like we're doing like stylish sweat joggers now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and not only that, we're taking like sweatpants silhouettes and mixing it with woven mm -hmm. bottoms now. I mean, you see the stuff that we're doing upstairs. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And, like like transitional shit, yeah. like drawstrings becoming more of a dressier look. You yeah. know, it's like I can see the transfer. It's just so funny that that sentence was flipped in, like put in. This paragraph that to signify a robe. I mean, it's like a modern day contemporary Jedi Knight. Yeah. Let's call him Obi Wan, dude. Yeah, but okay. Anyways, but like when, when we when we talk about like this in general too, it's like one thing I really noticed about this presentation that you made as well, because like for me too, like I said, like I have some experience like uh, merchandising and developing um, mm -hmm. uh, outerwear, right? Yep. So for me, like the three staples of outerwear in LA. 
in LA in general. And I and I feel like it is also like this too in like most of America. Mm -hmm. It's like you always have like a trucker jacket mm -hmm. or like some kind of heavy cotton twill jacket. Yeah. For example, these right here, you yeah. know? Uh, this It's a nice top layer over a shirt. Yeah, but man, like here's the thing. If you if you walk into any gap, any yeah. Banana Republic, any J. Crew, uh, any uh, even fucking like Abercrombie, you yeah. know, any like name brand, like white bread, like super moderate. I don't mean that racially. I mean like white bread as yeah. in like Wonder Bread. Like, yeah, like, like Wonder Bread, like just like the, just like basic like skin and bones, moderate clothing line that's yeah. really, really big and publicly traded yeah. because you know they're not making any money because like, they only make safe plays. You always see a trucker jacket come out in the market around mm -hmm. like spring yep. from like January till like April mm -hmm. and they have a bunch of trucker jackets. And so like trucker jacket is like a mainstay outerwear piece, okay? The second mainstay outerwear piece is a leather jacket. Mm -hmm. So you have like one kind of cotton base like this, mm -hmm. and then you do like leather. Leather is just, I don't know, like I don't know what it is about leather, but leather is just so fucking sexy. Like guys and girls alike. It's like, dude, when you see someone in like the fall, like sporting like a brand new leather jacket and everything, it just catches the eye. I don't really For get sure. it. For sure. You know, it's so nice, like- Has a nice sheen to it. Yeah, yeah, just, I don't know what it is, man. But like- Sometimes it, it's, it's like right. brand new, has that nice right. leather smell. Right, And but then yeah. like, I don't know about the smell. Is it an aphrodisiac? Yeah, no, no, I, 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 a leather jacket No, okay, I don't, I, don't, I don't mean, I don't mean like <laughs> sexy as in it gets me hard. It's like, it's sexy as in just like the look is, you know, I, you feel sexy when you wear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, it's like a confidence sure. kind of thing. For sure. like a leather jacket is like the ultimate flex piece. And then you also have like your long jackets, your long coats. You get like whether it's like a pea coat mm -hmm. or whether it's just like an overcoat. Yeah. But you know, and that's basically typically like a wool base, you know. Very like, heavy. Yeah, wool or like polyester base. Mm -hmm. And what you do is um you kind of put it over everything, mm -hmm. you know, for like yada yada yada. Yeah. You know? Um and th those three have always kind of been like a, like a staple, I believe in like, just like men's contemporary or casual fashion, mm -hmm. right? And the interesting thing about your presentation here too is like, here you have it, like a cotton twill base jacket. Yep. I'm, we have the Varsity Bomber, which yep. is always gonna be some kind of suede or leather, yep. right? And you have a long coat, yep. you get what I mean? And so like at the end of the day, like the principles still kind of stand for like what outerwear is. Yeah, they're you just kind of different, like, you see, take, different kind of takes on it. Right, and I got to this shit, update it. yeah, I got this shit already planned out for like the outerwear category if I ever wanted to get into it. Like yeah. I know exactly how to design into mm -hmm. this. You know, if I pick like a couple fabrications for each of these, yep. set a couple colorways for these, maybe one body per fabrication, everything, we're gonna have this giant booming outerwear business. Yeah. And then all you have to do then at that point is just like do like inventory control, right? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, I just don't know. Like we, we just need a market for it right now mm -hmm. because I think the value channel clearly is not it, you know? But like I'm itching to get into this. Like it's like, this is probably like the only unexplored territory right now for like menswear that we are not covering in this office, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, either way, I mean, I, I mean, even though we're not really in outerwear, I thought it was like really cool to just kind of like go over it. And For sure. Like, you know, just I was happy shoot to the, the shit about do it. Do the research about it, and it's just cool to see where it's, you know, where it's going now. And right. So, anyways, let's do like a quick recap. Okay, so Shacket, are you buying it? You selling it? You like it? You don't like it? What do you think? I love the Shacket. I think it's great. Yeah. I have a couple Shackets or shirt jackets that right. could be turned into a jacket. Right. Okay. So Shackets, good. Yeah. RC Bomber. Eh, maybe. I kind of like it because it kind of brings that, like I said, that nostalgic feel. I think it's cool for like you know with the patches and stuff like that. You think but... you can pull it off? I think I could. Yeah, I think so. I, you were a shock. Yeah. I, I know you don't like. I don't. I know you don't like labels, but <laughs> don't label me, man. Um, <laughs> but some of the like the examples we saw on Far Fetch stuff, those are pretty cool. The billionaire boys ones, I I would fuck with that. Those are pretty cool. You mean the ones that are over five hundred bucks? Yeah, if I had the money for that. Yeah. Okay. And Rope coat? Yeah, coat. probably not. You say that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that. the if Volo became a cool. Yeah, if yeah, I saw a dope like, you'd, one, like, you'd yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it. I do like pea coats. Pea coats are dope. I mean, obviously. Do you wear? Can't... Do you wear long coats? I have a pea coat. Yeah, but I mean, I only wear it when I go to New York or yeah, something yeah, like something yeah, super. I, I, super... I love pea coats too, man. They're great. Really? They're yeah. cool, but it's like you're never gonna wear it in Southern I, California. I it's yeah, that, that's 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 the only that's the only downfall is I have one, but it gets used maybe like yeah. But like, how would you wear it in Portland though? It rains all the time. Not as much in the well. I mean, it still rains, but yeah. in the winter, oh. sometimes it's just oh, okay. snowy. Sometimes yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. if you're like bar hopping in yeah. in Portland, you just 
and they're so close. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just Dude, put it on, go next one, hang it in the coat rack, yeah. Yeah. boom, just keep doing that. Dude, it's so funny, because I have this like really heavy coat. I got a really nice one. It's like fucking, I spent like 800 bucks on it or some shit like yeah. that. It's from Hugo Boss. Yeah. I, I like to really flex with my outerwear and everything, and I, and I have it. And every so often, it's like, you know, there's that one week in LA where it's like when you wake up in the morning, it's in like the mid 30s. Like there's always one week. In 30s? Yeah, yeah, where it's like really fucking cold in LA. There's always one week out of the year, like in like the dead of winter. It's usually around like January or February where it's like fucking cold for like a week. And then, I mean, midday it always goes up to like in the 60s, like Mm -hmm. the high 60s, but then in the mornings and night times it gets freezing fucking cold. During those days, you'll see, you guys will see me like this actually here. Sometimes I just wake up, I wear a t-shirt and jeans, and I'd be like, oh, it's fucking cold. And I just throw on my super duper $800 pea coat over my $2 fucking Kirkland t-shirt <laughs> and walk into the office. And people would be like, dude, that's a really nice Someone coat. Someone would call that a balanced wardrobe. <laughs> I know. They, like, you know, like people always make fun of me because they're like, dude, that's a really nice coat, but you still look like shit. And like, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, bro, no, I'm like, just trying to flex, man. Yeah, but it's like. Fucking shit. Yeah, but like, you know, it's like, um, but I mean, like, I think that's like the way like I would rock like a coat in LA. Yeah. Like it's like pure function. It's not really for like fashion, you know, but yeah, anyways. Okay, cool. Um, I think, you know, let's just wrap this up because I don't think, I think we ran out of shit to talk about. So yeah, um, yeah. it was cool talking to you, man. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Until next time. Mm Mm-hmm.